Hello! This video is a quick update on the previous uh, video where I was talking about a circuit that lets you play Sega Menacer games on the Sega Mega Drive with the Sega Light Phaser from the Master System. Now I got that circuit working to a state where I was happy with it. Uh, I ironed out the kinks that I mentioned in the previous video uh, and I've tested it with the three games that were released for the Mega Drive that use the Menacer. That's the six in one pack uh, pack in game that came with the gun, that's T2, the arcade game, and that's also body count. Uh, the gun works in those three games. I haven't been able to test it with any of the other games that were available on the Mega CD because I still don't own a Mega CD, so I'm not going to be able to test those games myself. But I have shifted my attention somewhat. Actually, before I talk about shifting my attention, I thought I'd just uh, wave this in front of the camera. This is the finished adapter in a box. Uh, you can see it has three buttons on it. This end plugs into the Mega Drive, this end plugs into the light phaser, and then you can hold it with a hand like that, and you've got your secondary fire button there, secondary fire button there, and then your start and pause button at the bottom. I hope that's somewhat in focus, leaning around the camera like this. But yes, there is the, the finished product, uh, as it were. You can find the circuit diagram on my website. I'll put a link to that in the video description if you want to try it yourself. Um, I'd be immensely grateful if someone uh, was, to, was able to try the circuit with a Mega CD, as I'm unable to do that myself. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was a fun little project, and it lets me play those Menacer games with the Light Phaser, which is a gun I much prefer, to be, to be uh, perfectly honest. Anyway, uh, my attention has since shifted, as you can probably tell by the uh, attract mode of lethal enforcers in the background, uh, to playing the Konami Justifier games, again with the light phaser. Uh, these games uh, require, again, a special gun, which is uh, considerably more expensive and more difficult to find than the Manasa, uh, particularly if you want to play two-player games, because that requires buying both the blue one-player gun and the pink uh, two-player gun, and I was really unable to find any of these guns at a sensible price. So I thought, well, buy a loose cartridge of lethal enforcers, uh, and I have put together this little circuit here uh, that uses a couple of multiplexer chips to connect these two guns to the console. Uh, here I have two guns plugged in via these sockets on the side here. So if I press one of these very small start buttons, there are two small push buttons there, for start. You'll see here that uh, when I pull the trigger on that gun, it advances through the menus, pull the trigger on that gun, it also advances through the menus. Let's try a two-player gun and gun uh, option. Start there, because of course it's very easy to play these games uh, with, uh, with two guns, a gun in each hand. Let's just pull the trigger on that. Uh, and you see, oops, one gun, Another gun there. Oops. Oops. Oh, reload, so shoot off screen to reload. Don't shoot that guy. Okay. Pretty terrible at these games at the best of time, uh, with just the one gun, but playing with two guns. You can see that that, that is working. Oops. Not so good with my left hand, apparently. Oops, definitely shouldn't have shot that person. Or that person. The horizontal aim is not great. There is a bit of inaccuracy with the horizontal aim. I don't know if that's my circuit's fault or if it's the uh, software that's to blame. Uh, because I was reading, because I've been doing, doing that using the notes by the emulator author Ekeek, I believe is their name. And they mentioned that this game doesn't use the horizontal uh, counter latch, whereas Lethal Enforcers 2 does. Now, I don't have Lethal Enforcers 2 to test with, so I can't verify that that is indeed the case. See there, I'm just going to die. So, I so play two start button, that works. Play one start button also works, and I can pause there. So, I mean, you can see it's sort of working there. I'll just uh, reset the console there. Sorry for the cut there. Unfortunately, my all-seeing, all-dancing new phone 
doesn't let me set the shutter speed when I'm recording video, like my old phone does, uh, but unfortunately my old phone also has a habit of corrupting video. So I'm just going to reshoot the end bit of that video, because uh, I was just pointing out uh, the gun calibration screen, and how that works if I go through to that, go to gun adjust, and if I hold that up and aim in the centre, doing it as best as I can down the camera's view, and then if I aim to one side, oops, aim to one side, aim to the top, and aim at the bottom. That does seem to work reasonably well. You can see some, oh no, I think if you can line up the site there, it's because I'm, so it's there. It's not brilliantly accurate. There is a bit of horizontal drift. So I need to do a little more testing and experimentation, see if that's uh, an issue with the circuit, see if I can improve the aim. Uh, one thing I will note is the, I, the equivalent of the Konami Justifier on the PlayStation, which is the Konami uh, Hyper Blaster, I have similar issues with the accuracy of that, so I'm not sure if that's just a Justifier stroke uh, uh, Hyper Blaster issue, or if there is some improvement that I can indeed make with this circuit. Uh, I would need to do some more testing with Lethal Enforcers too. Uh, should the cartridge for that ever turn up. Uh, but yes, in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and well. Thank you for watching, um, and catch you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>